Hi, my name's Ron Stone. This is a bass lesson in Mary Had a Little Lamb by Stevie Ray Vaughan. The song is Stevie Ray Vaughan tuned down a half a step, so the bass is actually tuned to D sharp on the E string and you know everything else accordingly. Um, you can play it without the tune down, but then you can't use the open strings the same way uh, as passing tones. Um, you, can, you can still use them, you just can't use them the, the same way. It fits better with the, with the tune down. So the song is um, essentially it's pretty simple in that it's a three chord blues song and the structure doesn't really change. It's, um, well I shouldn't say that. I guess the structure changes only because it starts on the four chord, the A, when he's singing um, and for the solo. Uh, but at the beginning it starts on the one chord, the E. So you just have E, A, and B. And um, the name of the game with this song is keeping the feel and using the passing tones to make walking bass lines. And uh, for the most part, he plays pretty consistently the same patterns, and then every once in a while he mixes it up by either approaching the note he wants from the top or he takes a different octave. So the main riff um, starting on the E is. Or it's okay, and that's just utilizing the note of the chord, the main note of the chord. In this case, the first one's E, and then using the fifth, um, and sometimes using the the third and the flat third, um, and the seventh. Okay. Uh, and then there's passing tones between that. Okay, so to create the bass line, I mean, I'm not of the mind that you want to do exactly what the guy's doing on the record, because what's the point? It's already recorded. I think everybody should make it their own, but, you know, you want the signature feel for it. So what you want to think about is when I want to go from one chord to another, how do I approach it? Where does it, where does it exist? So E, for the most part, you're going to mostly use E as far as the root right at the seventh fret. But the A, you can get it the octave or you can get it the low. Okay, and, and he, he makes a lot of use out of that, or maybe not a lot of use, but he makes use out of that. And then the B you can also approach from the low or the or, or the high octave. You know, certainly there's other places on the neck, but I mean it's 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 economically with the finger movement to stay around this area. So the main riff again And then when, when he wants to go to, to, to the A, he works his way up, staying in time and not losing the downbeat. Okay, that's one way to do it. Or So you can approach the A chord from uh, the flat 7th, or you can even start back on the 6th. On the 7th on the sixth. The and the 6th are usually good blues notes. The 6th, to my ear, gives a little more of a, um, a major flavor. To it, and then the flat seventh is one of the telltale, uh, you know, n notes of, of blues. So, um, so he starts out on E at you know at the intro, and then, and, and then works his way back to that one chord. Now that's where the open string and the way I play it helps me because when I go from the A back to the E, I go, okay, and I'm using anywhere in um, these notes starting on A to C sharp to D to D sharp depending on what I feel. So I can go, okay, or I can go. The big thing is to not lose the beat. So, you know, you got that. Oh, sorry. And and so you use that fifth especially a lot to stay when you need to, to sort of tap before you're going to hit the E again. The fifth is really a key note to use. And it works that way when you're on the A chord too. So, um, so let's take it from the E to the A. To, to 
tuned to the B, the five chord. So in this case, I'm going to go down and use the octave. So I'm just going to walk up to it. Okay. So when I'm on that five chord, I'm doing the same kind of thing. I'm utilizing its fifth. But I know I have to go right back to the A. So I'm using the A sharp as a passing tone to get back to it. Okay, so I'm hitting the, the B, the fifth, back to the B, the B flat passing tone, back to the A. And then working my way back up with that same climb to the main. You could play that the whole song and it would be fine. It doesn't lose the feel, it moves from chord to chord, you know, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about a couple of other things. So, so let's just go through the progression real quick once just to get the whole thing together. Oh, sorry. thing and then um, after that you have uh, when he starts the verse instead of starting on the E he just starts on on, on the four chord Mary had a little So it cycles A, E, B instead of E, A, B. Um, and the only other thing that you can do is you can, again, you can play around with how you get to the next chord. So at some point when he's on the A chord, he instead of climbing up here to the E, he uses the higher notes to climb up. You get a little bit of a different feel as you go. Okay, so, so, so I'm using the notes before the E, but then I'm coming back and hitting that same E, so I get that thumpy bass sound, because if I use the high E, it would be, yeah, and I don't, I don't really hear that being, being used, you could, I mean, it's not really, really wrong, but, okay, so then the other option is, is when you, when you're on the A, you can use the lower A, so, the same kind of climb to get back to the E after that. All right. And you can do the same thing with the B2 if you wanted um, when it's time to go to the 5 chord, so let's do that. I, I heard him do, I think, it, maybe just once, or at least once, is he, he climbed back to the, to the B as well, which you can do. So, uh, okay. Um, and so, I mean, that's really the, uh, the main sort of, you know, tricks that walking bass lines use to get. And so, I mean, you can apply that same thing to the other uh, octaves of the same thing. If you wanted to get to the five chord, I guess you could get to it from the high notes also. So, oh, sorry, I was up. I was up one. Okay. So, and what you want to plan when you're doing that is how many beats do I need so I land on the note that, that I want? And usually it's three or four. So. Okay, or you could also have done that. It depends on whether you want to pause or not. As long as you stay in time, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't make any difference. So, um, I would say that's that's pretty much all of the behind the scenes thinking that goes on with this song. And then um, I will separately just 
put a video of me, you know, me just playing the song like I have on the other public videos, and I'll just post that publicly um, so you can have the whole song at once. But now that you have the parts, I mean, I would say you can pretty much, you know, uh, construct it yourself. Because like I said, once you play through a couple of turns of the chords, I mean, you don't have to do anything fancy to, to finish the whole song. And you can even play the song straightforward when you first start playing it, and then as you get comfortable with it, start adding in the trills, you know, as you think of them, you know, based on what I'm showing you approaching the notes. So, um, great songs, some of my favorite Stevie Ray Vaughan songs. Have fun with it. Thank you very much.